It is bad when Donald Trump's own aides confirm the plan was that the boss was not going to leave. Remember, he is awaiting trial for plotting to steal the race so that the boss wouldn't have to leave. Pretty relevant. Now, the way we're learning about this is unusual. The RICO sessions are secret. The sudden leak had many asking who released the footage and the DA criticizing that leak. I'm not happy that it was released and that you and your colleague got to do your story. But <laughs> they were trying to figure out this week who leaked those videos. Well, there's absolutely no reason for Fawny Willis to have leaked this. Who's leaking the videos? I think somebody in the defense camp to whom these have been released um, as part of the discovery obligations of, of the Georgia prosecutors. That last voice was former prosecutor David Kelly at this table just last night, suggesting this mystery leaker might be in the defense camp and would have the videos because prosecutors have to hand them over in fairness to defendants. Now, that was an educated guess by Kelly. The DA also was publicly suggesting the leak was from anywhere, somewhere other than her office, but nothing was confirmed. And leaks are a part of reporting, a part of public life. Many leaks go unsolved for long times. The one and only leak of an internal draft Supreme Court opinion that's ever occurred in that case overturning Roe if you check in on that, it still has not been solved, even though the group of people with access to those opinions is tiny, the judges and their clerks for the most part, and that court conducted its own pro. Or take the most famous leaker in history, Nixon's antagonist Deep Throat from the Watergate scandal. That leaker stayed secret for decades, even after bringing down a president and spawning books and movies and tons of intrigue. No one figured the leaker out until he ultimately unmasked himself when he was in his 90s. So, we know leaks can last and stay unsolved, but tonight we can report you don't have to wait that long. Monday's unusual leak has now been solved by Wednesday. Tonight, the leaker has confessed. And Mr. Kelly was right last night. It was one of the Georgia RICO defense lawyers, the lawyer for actually one of the lesser-known defendants, Misty Hampton, you see there on the lower right, her lawyer took the videos that he was given by prosecutors and leaked it to journalists. Now, the background here, Hampton was a Georgia election supervisor indicted for conspiracy on election fraud, computer theft, and defrauding the state. Her lawyer, Jonathan Miller, obviously had a change of heart of some kind. His ears must have been ringing as the pressure dialed up this week with his leaked videos, leading the national news, and this powerful DA in his jurisdiction where he works and practices, blasting what he knew to be his leak. The DA said she was seeking answers and a binding protective order to stop these leaks. My team and um, the particular case that those got out, we had already filed um, to have a protective order where discovery in the case would not get out. Um, so surprising, no, disappointing, yes. In fact, today uh, from here, I made sure I wasn't late for this event, but I was with my team making sure that an emergency motion got filed. The news is coming out as fast. That was just yesterday, the DA mentioning that emergency motion. So fast-tracking it, we can report to you today a judge held a hearing on that very protective order request. Heat rising. The court hearing puts pressure on any parties in this case with something to hide. You can see the judge there. This was at today's hearing. And the whole virtual hearing going down today was dealing with whether there would be another order or rules to prevent leaks. And then, and I'm going to play this for you exactly as it went down, during this very hearing today, over this unusual leak, the lawyer confesses, turns himself in, and then tries to argue he's confessing now to somehow maybe protect other people who didn't do the leak. In being transparent with the court and to make sure that uh, nobody else gets blamed for what happened uh, and so that I can go to sleep well tonight. Uh, judge, I, I did release those videos to one outlet. There you have it. Confession. It was a virtual hearing, so you're looking at, you know, partly we have the Zoom up for you, but then you see the judge as Mr. Miller confesses now. He did initially try to leak this secretly, so his reasoning, by his own account, must have changed, as now he doesn't want others blamed. Journalists, of course, welcome all kinds of leaks to get to the facts. And as a matter of reality, tonight, as a society, we know more about the state's evidence than before this leak. 
The media and the public interest in these obviously accurate, real videos is obvious, and it is different and distinct from maybe what the court wants, its process and interests, because the court and the DA clearly want more discretion and confidentiality in this process. We can also report tonight the judge did issue a protective order today to prevent future leaks with a system where parties can try to deem evidence sensitive. So that is the process. As for what these leaks show and why this is all such a big deal, they're adding criminal evidence from some of the individuals you see on your screen who are convicted and cooperating against the remaining co-defendants. And so we hear Trump's convicted lawyers talking like Ellis and Kenneth Chesbrough with clues to the coup conspiracy. He said the boss uh, is not going to leave under any circumstances. We are just going to stay in power. And I said to him, well, it doesn't quite work that way, you realize. And he said, we don't care. All his instincts told him he had been defrauded, that the election was a big fraud. Did he ever point to any kind of proof or evidence or anything he was getting from his other attorneys or experts? Well, he talked about, you know, seeing the vote totals roll backwards on the TV just general instincts that something wasn't right here. Those are just some of the damning pieces of testimony that we now have on video. There's also new information about one of the RICO proffer sessions with another convicted Trump lawyer, Kenneth Chesbrough. Now, he was a key planner of the elector's fraud plot. The actual video has not surfaced, so I can't play you the same clips. But this week, The Washington Post obtained details about what he said in his session, how he briefed Donald Trump on that elector plot that was previously unreported, as well as his writings about what he called an assembling of alternate states, slates of electors. Now, that's a euphemism you may have heard before that refers to something we've been documenting. The criminal plot to use elector fraud, that's the very top red arrow convicted, you see, to try to overthrow what was then President-elect Biden's win. In that session, Chesbro admitting he helped transport those related fraudulent documents signed by Trump electors to Capitol Hill to try to use them in the January 6th coup plot. That's big. That's a Trump lawyer confessing and detailing a link from those plots on the ground, including some in Georgia that may have seemed admittedly small or random, and stretching it all the way back to January 6th itself. And we know as Pence walked into the session that day, there were still efforts to stuff or jam these false or fraudulent documents into his hands. You may recall January 6th committee investigations exposed how staff were going back and forth furtively about this in the final moments. And Pence's staff, I guess to their own self-interest or credit, were resisting those fraud documents even getting in his hand. So all of this is putting evidence in place, complete with the intrigue of a mystery leaker turning himself in. And lawyers like Ellis and Chesbro now in this key spot.